Hello and welcome to um, Jessica. Jessica Ship is the community connector in Ivy Bridge and well we just want to bring you a bit of an update of, as to what is being planned in the Ivy Bridge area in, in the next few weeks as we sort of move through this very rapid um, develop situ si rapidly developing situation with Covid. So hello Jessica. Hi there, thanks for having me today. Now, just to, let's just kick off with just where we are because you've, you've had such an extraordinary response in the Ivy Bridge area for volunteering. So just tell us what's happened there. Yeah, so we um, very, very early on when um, lockdown happened, we set up a Ivy Bridge coronavirus community response group, which now a lot of local villages, towns, etc., have done as well, which is brilliant. And it started on Facebook and now it's become more of a kind of organized affair and we've just been overwhelmed with the amount of people coming forward wanting to help wanting to give up their time to help those people that really need it and it's just been remarkable we have now um a list of almost 100 volunteers um not all of them have gone through the checks yet but i'm busy doing that when i get the time and we have we know that we have helped over a hundred households whether that's individuals or families with all sorts of things like shopping prescription collections um even done a bit of laundry um taking the bins out for some people that's kind of you know all these sorts of requests and generally they come through the watermark helpline which we can put in the comments at the end the number or people who have got the internet can go on the facebook web page and put in their requests and those that happens organically so if you phone the helpline someone will put you in touch with a volunteer if you phone if you do it online on the Facebook page um, some a volunteer themselves comes forward and says yes I can help you with that so there's two ways of doing it but yeah it's just been really wonderful um, how people have come forward and just so positive it's been great it's, it's amazing isn't it I mean I love the um you know, I know it's been a very troubling time for many people, but one of the real positives I think that I've seen is just this extraordinary response, compassion, people wanting to support neighbours, friends and families. There's just been this, it's spontaneous. That's mm, what I've really yeah. loved in, in just seeing, just being very proud of, of where I live and, um, Definitely. and people that, you know, we live with. It's an amazing community, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. And I guess um, to add on to that, what we're not picking up on but what we know is happening is that so our 100 households are, are the people that have phoned in for support but there are so many people in Ivy Bridge in their own little neighborhood who are already helping their next door neighbor or their person three doors down you know I speak to volunteers almost daily and they'll say well, I'm already helping five families on my street so actually there's so much going on already um, and this is just a more formal process for those people that haven't got that neighbourly support or, or, or haven't wanted to ask for it and haven't wanted to bother their neighbours. So, yeah, I think the effect is actually uh, remarkable, really. It's great. Now, I know that that's been, you know, rapidly, you, you've been sort of helping people connect volunteers, checking volunteers out. That's, that's a sort of uh, something that's been sort of rapidly progressing over the last few weeks. But also, I know that it's really important as well, as we don't know what the future is um, at all. But what we do know is that it's good that people like yourself are looking ahead, saying what might be the needs of the community in the future? And how might we best support our community? So, I just want to share this because you, you sent me this and I thought it was really helpful just to visualize um, maybe how you see things progressing um, post COVID. So can you just take us through this, this mm -hmm. top graph here? Yeah. So this top graph was sent to me um, via a, a, an NHS learning platform and sharing ideas platform for link workers so like myself social prescribers community connectors link workers and all the other roles like that um, and this is a, a graph that's that's going around within and the nhs and probably other organizations it's not a particularly positive graph for individuals to see but it's a really helpful graph for people working in the community to see to really highlight the effect that COVID is potentially going to have on people's burnout, economic injury, 
psychic trauma and mental illness, which is the red graph, the red line, sorry. Um, so we can see from this that um, the, the pandemic peaks and then it drops off. So does the impact of resources on urgent, that's the green one. And so does, does the interrupted care on chronic conditions. Um, that then peaks and then it goes off. But this red one, is is the only one that remains really high and high is not good on this graph um, and so I saw this graph and it really prompted me to say okay if this is if this is accurate which obviously we don't know it is but let's assume it is what can we do in our community in Ivybridge and surrounding parishes to address that mental well-being that economic injury and that burnout with those individuals in our community that that we as volunteers or as local organizations can support and how can we do that so then as a result of that I have drafted a kind of post-covid strategy type thing so I've done this second graph which is taking those four elements of the uh, red line and trying to map them and this is very very kind of rudimentary and just based on my gut feeling and it's probably will change in fact it definitely will change as to what what how long that economic burnout is going to last how long that mental well-being is going to um remain unbalanced um and then i've added one in which is the orange one which is the volunteer support so currently like we just spoke about we've had an amazing response to volunteers now how can we keep those volunteers going in our community obviously lots of them have been furloughed so they're not going to have the capacity to carry on volunteering and that's completely understandable some of them will just want to do this help now and that's really valuable and we'll be ever grateful for that and won't want to carry on afterwards but hopefully some of them will want to carry on helping in the community and how can we best equip them to do that in a situation that will be different in the short term possibly in the medium term to how we know life as normal um, so is can we get some money to do some online training for them can we put them in touch with local organizations that are already stretched and at capacity like the food bank to, to sign up as volunteers citizens advice etc those those organizations that are really established within ivy bridge can we signpost those volunteers to them um, and so that's kind of where this work start, um, started from and it's definitely a work in progress but it, I think it's been a really interesting process to go through because it's helped uh, myself and the people who I work with to kind of sort of try to um, try to kind of predict the future <laughs> um, as to what our community is going to need and obviously this week with with the um, announcements that are going to be made at the end of the week in terms of how we might be easing lockdown. This is a crucial time for this, I think. Yes, absolutely. And I think what I'm hearing and what you're saying is that you, you are really keen to harness the energy of the volunteers that have already stepped forward because it, you, you really see that over the, the coming weeks and months as, as lockdown I guess the, the measures will be sort of loosened a little bit and we'll be able to get out and about more, is that the, the mental well-being of the community is going to be at the heart and foremost of Ivy Bridge and the surrounding parishes, our recovery as we build for this new future, whatever that might be. And keeping those volunteers on board as much as you can sounds like a really excellent plan. I love it. Yeah, I mean, I think we've been so overwhelmed, like I said at the beginning, at the response that, that and, and have felt it's really helped us drive, you know, our drive to keep working and it's really been lovely, that why not keep that positive feeling going? You know, that these are people that have come forward with spare time and if they've still got spare time, well, there is definitely going to be a need in our community for volunteers. So, yeah, hopefully we can, we can really keep that energy going. Excellent. And, and of course, the Wellbeing Listener Programme we see is very much part of that. That's, that's really just encouraging people to, to, I don't know, learn some listening skills to support friends, families, colleagues, just, just those everyday conversations that we're, I guess we're going to have more and more with people that, that really do feel the uncertainty and, and, and worry. You know, it's like, how can we best support our loved ones, our friends, families and colleagues in Definitely. the coming weeks and months? Yeah, and I think if you can 
kind of get those volunteers trained up um, as well-being listeners then that ripple effect in our community will really be really strong because they are then feeling resilient and they've got loads of really brilliant tools that they can then use with the people they're working with um, as well as friends and family you know it's useful for all kind of the everyone you deal with in your day-to-day -day life I've done the training with you and it's really brilliant so yeah I think that's going to be a, a kind of key thing we're going to look at is that equipping those volunteers with the skills that they need they're going to need to respond to the need in the community so if anybody is curious and, and has maybe been touched and thought do you know what i haven't volunteered but i'd love to volunteer or i'd love just to to get hold of you jessica how can they do that just to sort of pick your brains on how they can best support ivy bridge going forward so they can do that in a number of ways. They can phone the helpline that we spoke about before and let them let that person know that they want to sign up as a volunteer and whoever's manning the line will forward the email to me and I'll phone them or contact them via email. They can email me at connector at southhamscvs.org.uk or they can phone me and I can never remember my work phone, but we can put that in the comments as well. Um, and I guess it's worth highlighting that I am the support, the general support person for the volunteers because a lot of these people are doing things that are new to them. So it's really comforting for them to know they've got someone that they can phone, someone they can email with questions and queries, anything. And, it, and I always say to people, if you, you know, if, if you feel something's not right, just say, um, because you'd rather say it and then we can investigate and go from there just in terms of concerns if they're helping somebody um, or just general I you know how does it work to be a volunteer what what are the expectations on me etc cetera, etc cetera. right it's lovely and, and, and it's uh, ever-evolving and I know that you know there's a group of like-minded people like yourself um, that are really just keeping an eye on how we can best support Ivy Bridge and the residents of Ivy Bridge and the surrounding parishes moving forward. Jessica, it's been a real delight to catch up with you today. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Liz, it's been great.